Hey everybody, Appalachian Dual Sport here, and uh, this is my final follow-up video of this aluminum 4x8 trailer that I got from Northern Tool here in Chattanooga. It's called the Ultra Tow. They got a couple different kinds of aluminum self-assembled folding trailers. This one, like I said, is the 4x8. Supposedly can hold about a thousand pounds, I think they say something like that but uh, I did indeed tow this all the way across the country first to Utah for an Everride rally and then up to Seattle to see my family and then back home to Chattanooga so I made it all that way I'd say I put on more than 6,000 miles and from new this is what the tire looks like you can see there's some interesting wear I don't know if this is just the way the tread pattern is didn't pay much attention but it's it's got a little what seems to be more wear here than in the center and then on this shoulder doesn't seem to be worn at all so I don't know really what's going on there um, let's check out the other one so I'd say the tires on it are not going to last very long this one's not quite doing the same thing now uh, I want to talk about I guess the wrap up and my final thoughts on this thing is that for the money, I don't know if I would buy this again. It was a, it was a pain in the butt to assemble and it doesn't turn out square. As you can see, my piece of plywood on here is overhanging here and a gap there, but overhanging there, but you can't quite get it straight. And then you got to cut it in the middle so that it can fold if you want it to. But I have it bolted together right now so that it would not fold if I wanted it to. Uh, remove the casters that are normally there. Um, they're totally unnecessary for me since I didn't plan on folding it, but I think I'm gonna sell this thing and get rid of it. Uh, I only bolted down the plywood top in a couple places, just uh, drilled through into the rail below and attached the bolt. Now over those 6,000 plus miles that I towed this thing, I did indeed lose a couple bolts and just vibrated out and fell off. The most dangerous one was this one here that uh, allows the, the tongue here to fold. One of those fell out during the drive, so it was just kind of hanging off there. Um, caught it one night when I came out in the morning to inspect my trailer, and it was just hanging loose, so I just got another bolt, happened to have another bolt, and just stuck it in there and tightened it up, and off I went. So uh, this thing, you constantly have to check the bolts, I would say. Not all of them. Some of them, I think, are rock solid, like on the suspension. Uh, it did, as a positive, it did tow straight. It didn't seem to have any problems. I went probably 80, 85 at a few points. And, uh, you know, it's supposed to not go any faster than 55, but I was clearly exceeding that in a few spots because in Texas and Montana and places like that, the speed limit's much, much higher. So in order to stay up with traffic, you're doing 75 most of the time. Um, so, and it towed straight. I had two bikes on there, probably a total weight of a little over 500 pounds in bikes on this trailer. Uh, those cheap Chinese front wheel chocks that I got at Harbor Freight are garbage. Do not get those. They're absolute trash. Um, I had an incident where I crossed a railroad track, admittedly too fast, and the whole trailer bounced, and my bikes came up over these and, and pushed these down so they were almost pancaked flat. So they're absolute garbage. Um, unless you plan on reinforcing them somehow by adding a brace from this lower stanchion to this upper part. Somehow bracing it there so that it will not fold. Uh, I would definitely never get those again. Um, so I don't think price is a great enough factor to buy this trailer again. And the, uh, another positive that you you know if you've got a lightweight vehicle and you're towing something this trailer is light that is its main benefit is that it's lightweight um, I can easily tow it by hand up this hill over here into my yard way uh, into my yard for this video it's not a problem I don't think I could tow it with the bikes or pull it by hand with the bikes on it but uh, uh, by itself I mean I used to have a um, 6 by 14 steel trailer and there's no in hell I was pulling that up a hill by hand so um, 
this one you can easily do that so if you if you need something lightweight that you can move around by hand and reposition and stuff and store and fold and all that then yes this is a this is possibly a uh, a contender but for my next trailer i think i'm going to get an aluminum probably six by ten aluminum non-folding just regular style trailer um, i like the fact that aluminum doesn't rust and is light so and this trailer another thing that really really irritated me is that this came with these aluminum little aluminum guards that went around your taillights and by the time i made it to seattle both were destroyed from vibration or what have you uh, both were completely cracked and garbage and these were barely hanging on so i just made this new l bracket this one's made out of aluminum and this one over here is made out of steel because even the aluminum one i made uh, cracked on the drive home from Seattle it uh, it broke right here so maybe I had stressed it too much when I made that bend and maybe it was my fault but this one hung in there this one didn't so the next one I made was out of steel so um, so my phone died just as I was about to get to showing you other problems with this uh, aluminum parts on this trailer uh, after the brackets, these little uh, safety cages that went around the tail lights, the next parts that broke were these fenders. They're both broken. As you can see right here, major crackage. Goes all the way to here. It's all the way over here. It's all cracked through here. A uh, little crack up here. I mean, they're just this thin, fakish diamond plate aluminum. Super lightweight, but also super garbage. So this one's cracking. Here, here, there's a hole. This is cracked here, barely hanging on. Not as cracked in these corners as the other fender, but uh, that's disappointing. I mean, the parts that they give you, you know, they should last far longer than that. Um, and whether these are cracking because of like wind pushing on them or just constant vibration, I don't know. But whatever's happening there, it's a joke. Um, you can get replacement fenders at Northern Tool. They're about, I want to say, for steel fenders, they're probably about 20 bucks, and they wouldn't be that big of a deal to just drill a couple holes and slap them on there. But, I mean, now you're talking about, you know, another 50 bucks to fix these issues. So now a $700 trailer is $750, and, you know, what else is going to fracture? What else eventually is going to break? I don't know. Um, so, you know, considering all these things, uh, once again, this is not a trailer I would buy again. It's just, it did its job, it got me there and back, um, but I was constantly worried about bolts falling off, things coming off the trailer, things coming loose, things breaking. Um, luckily, nothing tragic happened. Uh, this is the bolt when I told you that when the, uh, the, the bolt fell out on the, uh, the tongue here, that's the bolt there that fell out, but luckily there is a pin here that kind of kept it in place. So had that broken, uh, I think the trailer would have went totally out of control. Um, but luckily that didn't happen, and that's a pretty big pin over there, so I don't think that would have happened. But anyway, that's it for the Ultra Toe from Northern Tool. I would, uh, at this point, I'd give it a, a thumbs down. So I hope you've enjoyed watching. I hope this has helped somebody make a decision on this trailer. And uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Give me a uh, hit that subscription button. We'll see you next time. Appalachian Dual Sport out.